Amen. So today is the octave day of the feast of St. Mary Magdalene. Uh, eight days ago was her feast day, and so it's fitting today we have the feast of St. Martha, her sister. Um, uh, tradition has always recognized that, that, that Martha and Mary uh, were sisters and their brother was Lazarus. Um, and it's... Um, <laughs> Today's uh, gospel reading is, is the kind of the, the famous one where uh, Martha and, 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 well, Martha is helping to assist our Lord who comes to visit their house, and Mary is sitting at his feet, listening, right, being lazy. And then Martha says, Lord, tell her to stop being lazy and be responsible for once. And our Lord gives her, the, the, the Martha, the, those, those um, tremendous words in the gospel, uh, you're concerned about many things, but only one thing is necessary. Right, one thing necessary, uh, the salvation of our souls, right? Uh, listening to our Lord, learning from him. Uh, but to set the stage for this gospel, right? This is a very, um, we would say, uh, domestic affair, very, very family. Uh, there's a lot going on here. So uh, Mary, uh, um, Mary Magdalene is also called um, sometimes Mary of Bethany. And um, this is not uh, canonical truth, but this, this is very fitting with, with what we know from, from history and tradition and so on. So uh, um, Mary Magdalene was, as we know, not living a very good life. She had left her brother and sister um, in Capernaum and went to uh, Bethany. And there she plied her trade. I think they say, I think it's the oldest trade in the world or the second oldest, one of the two. Uh, she wasn't living a good life there in Bethany. Um, she was living in uh, this kind of luxurious life of sin. Uh, but when she is converted by our Lord, uh, go and sin no more, she returns home to her brother and sister. And uh, Martha, being the practical one, and certainly Martha and Lazarus were praying for Mary's conversion, and it worked. She returned, and then Martha set about to reform her sister, who greatly needed it. And it's like, now it's time to, to teach you how to be responsible for once, right? So Martha is, is teaching Mary, this is how you take care of people in the right way, uh, right? This is, this is how to cook and clean and care for a house and so on. And, and that's very good. There's all these practical tasks Martha is teaching her. Uh, but then our Lord comes and uh, Mary leaves behind those things and goes to sit at the feet of the one who saved not only her life, but her soul. Right? Our Lord who forgave her and prevented her from getting stoned to death. So you can see a little bit, you know, if, if Martha wasn't so choleric and, and focused on the task at hand, she might have been able to see, you know, there's my sister, there's the man who saved her life and her soul. I should just let her spend some time with him. But she's too task-oriented. And, and this, the herein is the problem. And this has always been the problem throughout, throughout the history of the church and even before, is recognizing the priority of goods. Yes, there are good things in the world, and there are better things in the world. Uh, there are good things in life and better things in life. What are those things? And how much attention and time should you give to them? Uh, and, and that was your mistake. Anytime we have something uh, of this earth uh, th that is good, it's still not as good as things of the Spirit, right? Anything supernatural or, or having to do with heaven or salvation is going to be better than anything to do with, with our bodily needs, right? Is not the soul worth more than the body? Yes, absolutely. Um, but, but how much, right? What's the right proportion? And that's where everybody gets everything wrong. We tend to focus too much on this world because that's what we're surrounded by. We're surrounded by this world and, and we can see the effects. And this is a big problem with activism, and in fact, the, the, there's that, um, that author, um, uh, uh, Dom Chatard, and his book, The Soul of the Apostolate. Uh, the soul of the apostolate is prayer. The apostolate is, you know, any good work we're doing in this, in this earth. Hospitals, orphanages, preaching missions, you know, uh, uh, churches, schools, and so on. Those are apostolates, and they're doing something. There's something we can see, something we can measure, something we can have, you know, some kind of like, okay, I did this, and I achieved this effect. Great. That's an apostolate. Uh, but what's the soul of that apostolate? Just like you have a body. Okay, you can see a body. Can you see a soul? You can't see the soul. But guess what happens if a body doesn't have a soul? It is dead. 
Right? That is a dead body. And you can see a body. You, you can't see the soul, but you can see the effects of it. And so that is Dom Chittard's point. The soul of the apostolate, doesn't matter what you're doing, school, hospital, orphanage, preaching mission, church. If you don't have prayer, you're going to have a body without a soul. It's not going to be effective. It will not. It may look like you're effective. You may have revenue. You may have people attending, but you're not going to have salvation. There's, no, there's going to be no supernatural grace. And so that's the lesson we learned from today's gospel is that we're not saying, uh, you know, that, that Martha, you know, Martha, serving our Lord is good. Being concerned about many things is good, but you have to subordinate that to the one thing necessary. Churches are good. Uh, schools, orphanages, initiatives, those are all good, but they're not as good as prayer. They're subordinate to the Spirit. What is a church for, right? What, 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 are, what are these things? What, what, what good is a hospital? What is it going to do? What good does it do you to bring people physical health and leave them in mortal sin to the death of their soul? What good does that accomplish? Right? That is what we constantly are in need of hearing because we are, we, it's so hard to forget what comes so easily to us by nature. So that, that, that's, that's the great lesson from today's gospel reading, and that's the great lesson for um, uh, the Marthas of the world out there. Our efforts are good. Our, 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 our choleric tendency to want to do and to accomplish and, 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 and to see things done, that is all good, but it is subordinate. It's, it's our, accompl our accomplishments. It's our conformity to God's accomplishments that are important. What is God accomplishing with his grace? And very often, God moves in mysterious ways. The hardest thing for the choleric temperament is to let go and let something just happen because it feels like laziness. Uh, but that may be what God wants. Just let go and actually take a break and relax and don't have your fingers in everything and maybe things will work out. Right? That's what, that's what uh, um, the Marthas uh, need to understand. But, however, um, God doesn't waste uh, talent God knows that the, 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 the uh, abilities he's given us, and God knew that those tendencies and qualities of Martha were good. So how did he use them? Uh, so I, I mentioned this briefly eight days ago, but let's go, we'll go over it again. What happened with that family, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, they were after the, the death and resurrection of Christ and Pentecost. You know, they, they were preaching, they were living life there in Jerusalem, uh, but they were apprehended by the Jews and uh, sentenced to martyrdom essentially by drowning. They were put on a raft and pushed out into the ocean and left to, to drift and then to die. However, the raft uh, was miraculously carried to southern France where it landed uh, nearby what we know now as Marseille, right, the town of Marseille, France. Lazarus became a bishop, the first bishop of Marseille. Uh, Mary retired to a cave and lived a life of penance and solitude. And what do we think happened to Martha? capable, strong, uh, a, a very active Martha, she opened a convent of nuns, or a, a, a community of women, we would say. Convents didn't exist as we know them, but she gathered a group of holy women around her, and what did they do? They devoted themselves to prayer and to good works, right? And so how fitting, right, for all three of, of those uh, uh, individuals, uh, something suited to each of them. So um, that's, that's our great lesson, right? God, God knows what he has given us. He knows our talents. And, uh, you know, he, he, we're, we, we can't look at uh, a tendency or a temperament we have as a bad thing. Uh, those, even those, it doesn't matter. There are, there are good side and bad sides. Those who are very active are, have a tendency to overactivism, overzealousness. They get too involved. They get too pushy. Okay, that's the bad side. But the good side is um, uh, they can lead. They can get things done. They can lead others to great works and great uh, sacrifice. And that's what Martha did. Uh, Mary, you know, w w very, very sensual, but, but she overcame that and became very loving, right? Uh, she became more introverted. Uh, and she wasn't doing as many active things, but she was doing much more contemplative things. We need both. We need that in the world. Uh, so let's not uh, be disparaging of ourselves or other people's gifts or drawbacks, but realize that God, God is the one who purifies everything. If we, if we have a bad quality or a bad trait, there's a good side to it as well. And we need to ask God to come in there, enter into it, purify this, this tendency I have, and turn to what you know uh, can save souls and save the world. That's how God wants to do it, filling us with sanctifying grace and working through us. Uh, let us pray to the saints, uh, to St. Martha, uh, for uh, her intercession, that we might conform ourselves to the will of God. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. 
And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.